Director John McTiernan has 11 films under his belt with a few classics like Predator, Die Hard, and The Hunt for Red October. So let's rank them. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having a good one today. I'm the Movie Ranker and today I'm ranking all 11 films directed by John McTiernan. Um, he had quite the career, like I mentioned in the intro, he has a few big hits on his hands. He also has a couple remakes that he's done and a few stinkers in there as well, but we'll get into that. Make sure you drop your ranking of his films down in the comments section or at least give me your favorites. We'll have a great discussion. Also like the video, subscribe to the channel if you enjoy rankings like this and let's get into it. So for me, easily coming into last place at number 11 is Nomads. John McTiernan's directorial debut and you got to start somewhere and uh, yeah this is not a good movie I did not enjoy it at all it stars Pierce Brosnan and he has this very terrible French accent throughout the film and yeah this movie just makes no sense it's not scary there's no thrills there's not a lot of action or nothing it's just very very uninteresting and boring um, he follows around this gang, this like punk gang who drives a van and he learns to find out that there are these like, I don't know, like Inuit shape shifting entities or some shit. And it's yeah, it's just very dumb. It's not very coherent. Uh, everything's told basically through flashbacks because the main character Pierce Brosnan, Brosnan dies at the very starting of the film, kind of transfers his memories to the nurse or some shit. Nothing makes sense. It's stupid. It's boring. It's a movie I will never watch again. Up next, at number 10, I got Medicine Man. Another pretty dull entry in this filmography here. Uh, it stars Sean Connery as this uh, doctor, scientist type guy trying to solve a, find a cure for cancer in the rainforest. And he finds his flower. He does a test and it works. But he can never replicate the solution again he, he, he can't figure out what happened is he missing an ingredient or whatnot and he teams up with this girl who's like a damsel she's so annoying this other doctor and yeah she has this bad Bronx accent as well I don't know if that's natural or not but it just didn't sound right and this girl couldn't act her way out of a wet paper bag she's terrible 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 especially paired next to Sean Connery um, yeah, this movie is just really dull. I expected th there to be some good adventure scenes at least, but even the adventure stuff is pretty mediocre. Um, yeah, it's all science talk and trying to figure out this cure for cancer using this flower, and it's not very interesting to me at all. Um, they throw in this random scene at the end with a road being built through the village and through the rainforests and them trying to stop the bulldozers and such. And it feels like that was tacked on because the movie was just so dull that they needed some excitement in there. Uh, perhaps not. Maybe it was in the original script. But either way, uh, not a very good film. I didn't get much enjoyment out of it. Up next, at number 9, I'm going with Rollerball. Now, this is a movie that's usually at the bottom of most of John McTiernan's ranking lists. Um, it's a movie I seen being bashed for the last 20 years since its release. I remember the movie coming out and seeing the posters and stuff, but I just never checked it out until now. And you know what? It's not great, but it's not the worst thing I've ever seen either. I was fairly entertained by it, uh, about this movie, about this extreme sport with rollerblades and it, it doesn't make a whole bunch of sense. There's uh, a member of the team with like a motorcycle and they're going around this derby and they have a ball they have to score with. Like I said, but it's fun to watch, um, even though it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Uh, the lead, I think, could have been better. He's a little bit miscasted. Uh, it's the guy, he's from Just Friends as Dusty. He's also in American Pie as like Oz. So um, he's always has these like comedic roles. So having him in this more serious lead here, it just didn't seem to work. He, he just, he's not cut from the right cloth, I don't think. Uh, we also got LL Cool J in here, which is pretty cool. Uh, the movie does suffer from being very 2000s, early 2000s. Has that new metal soundtrack and just the style and the editing is just like the films of that, that decade. And even though this sport is extremely dangerous and violent, 
um, the people running this organization or this franchise, this sport, are even more dangerous. It's almost run like almost as if it's the mob or the mafia running it. Uh, they got their hands in the mines and they're very powerful and rich. And if they want someone taken off the team, they could easily kill them and get rid of them without questions being asked. But if you're a star, you're not going to be able to run away so easy as well because there's a lot of bets in that on this game. So I found all that part of the story very interesting. Um, yeah, and the, the story is fun. The characters are fine. I just find there's some weird editing choices in here. There's like a whole five minute scene where they decide to go with night vision. For some reason, everything's filmed in night vision. And it's not like someone had night vision goggles on or anything. It's just filmed that way at dark, at night. So that was a very, very odd choice. And near that same scene, they drive over a fence. And it makes like a boing sound, like a weird audio effect. And it happens twice because then the bad guys are chasing them and they go over the fence as well. So yeah, just a very few weird choices for John McTiernan directing this one. Probably is craziest uh movie that he's directed in that terms of style and uh editing and nuances and stuff just very weird but i think this movie is bashed way too much for no good reason and apparently it's a remake of a 70s flick perhaps people love that movie and hate this one for that reason i haven't seen it i didn't even know this was a remake uh, all these years so i can't really see that film be that popular from the 70s but either way I enjoyed this one enough. It's kind of a bad movie that's super entertaining. So I enjoyed it. Up next at number eight, I got the movie Basic. The last movie that John McTiernan directed in 2003. Um, I just watched this one this morning for the very first time. So it's fresh in my mind. I enjoyed it. Uh, from what I can tell from Letterboxd or using that, a lot of people find this to be messy and hard to follow. And I understand that. It's the story is being told through interrogation scenes and we see flashbacks of these two soldiers who survived a training exercise that went wrong and we're trying to figure out what happened because soldiers died. These are the only two survivors. People got shot and stuff. Their commander played by Samuel L. Jackson is also dead or missing whatever. Uh, very interesting premise here and the interrogation scenes are made uh, to be a little bit more fun because it's uh, John Travolta who's interrogating them and he has a certain amount of charisma in here just kind of lightens up those scenes but yeah um, the story is being told by these soldiers and they're both telling two different sides of the story so you're not really sure uh, who to trust who's telling the truth there's a lot of twists and turns throughout right to the final act you think the movie's over and then there's like two more endings it's one of those crazy movies um, so I imagine if the twists and stuff don't land for you, this movie's not going to work. But for me, it worked well enough. I was fairly surprised by it. Um, and also Travolta is paired up with this woman. She's works for the military. Uh, she's an Osborne is her last name or character anyway. And I think they were a great match together, uh, cause they were very different from one another. So they made great partners when they're interrogating and such. And yeah, it was just a very interesting movie. That had me guessing all the way right till the end what was actually going on. So um, if these mind-bending movies are for you, check this one out. Definitely not the strongest movie by John McTiernan, but not a failure either for his last movie. Uh, not too bad. Up next, at number 7, I got The 13th Warrior. Now, this is a fun movie with Antonio Banderas. He's like an Arabic uh, ambassador who kind of gets banished up into the north or something like that. And he ends up running into these Vikings. And he ends up becoming a part of their mission, their journey, to take on these creatures in the mist up north who are terrorizing villages and such. Uh, very cool little concept here. It's like kind of mixing... Um, Arabic Muslim folklore with like uh, Beowulf type storyline mixing them two together which I really appreciate it apparently this is based off a novel so uh, that, it, it worked out fairly fine it's not really deep character wise or anything uh, but the story is fun you got some cool battle scenes uh, when you find out who the creatures actually are in the mist it's very interesting and seeing how that plays out um, and just seeing this guy, this ambassador, who was a former poet um, from uh, like the Middle East, uh, become a Viking over time. You know, they're very different from one another, but he ends up becoming a warrior over time in his own way. Like he has a smaller horse. 
Uh, their swords are too big for him, so he like scales it down and makes it more like a saber and a little skinnier than that. And yeah, it's just a fun time. It doesn't have a lot of deep character moments or nothing. I think that would have made it better. It does rush over certain aspects. Like the whole intro seems super rushed. He's like in with the Vikings within the first 10 minutes. And the final, final battle, I feel like, is a little underwhelming compared to the rest of the film. But overall, I did really enjoy this. I just feel like there's a much better film that could have been made here, you know, if they would have really went in depth with the main characters and their situations and such. And I have to point out, there is one funny scene in here that had me kind of roll my eyes where uh, Antoni Antonio Banderas' character doesn't speak the Viking language, the Norseman's language, right? So he, he speaks his own. And so he doesn't understand them. He's just hearing kind of gibberish. And out of nowhere, he's just like watching them around a fire. And he's just like, oh, he it starts translating and he can understand them. He's like, and can start speaking their language. He's like, no, I listened and watched you guys over the last little while. And I picked it up and I learned. I'm an ambassador. That's my job. And I'm just like, no, that, that was a little forced. Like, they should have built up to him learning the language or whatnot. But it's just kind of like, oh, no, I know it now. And I feel like that's just so that the movie can be turned into English for everybody to understand. But aside from that little nitpick and it not being very much in depth when it comes to the story and characters it makes up for an entertainment value and it's pacing the movie kind of just flies by so yeah a pretty fun watch if you ask me coming up next at number six i got the hunt for red october now this is a lot of people's favorite movie from john mctiernan and for good reason from here on out from number six to number one are all amazing watches all definitely worth checking out to everybody who never seen them and this one is based off a Tom Clancy novel. It's about this uh, stealthy Russian submarine that kind of went AWOL with its captain and crew. And you're not really sure what their intentions are. Are they going to go over to attack the states? Are they just trying to defect from Russia? And it's just real interesting. And you got America and Russia trying to deal with the situation and trying to find the submarine. Because like I said, it's so stealthy that it's hard to find. And it's very powerful. It's a nuclear submarine. And its captain is Sean Connery, played by Sean Connery. And he does an excellent job. The characters really stick out for the most part in this film. There's not a whole lot of action or whatnot. It's more of like a, you know, a Cold War type film. So it's great that we got great character moments in here. Uh, one scene I do enjoy in particular, though, is where the submarine needs to be navigated through a really small passageway. And they're going at really high speeds to avoid missiles and such and to get away. And you think like, oh, it's, it's full of tension, man, because it keeps feeling like they're going to hit the rocks and something and probably be their death. But no, their, their captain is just so good at navigating, uh, like I said, by Sean Connery. And just all of this dialogue, everything, it just chews up the scenery in here. And his right hand man in the submarine, uh, played by uh, Sam Neill. Uh, he does a really good job as well. And yeah, we just get a great character moments between those two. The only character I feel like was kind of not developed as well as I thought was um, Jack Ryan himself, the main protagonist in this the Tom Clancy series this is based off of. And Alec Baldwin plays him. He does a good, decent enough job. Doesn't really impress me like the other actors. But I just feel like he's, he's supposed to be such a central character, but... He feels like he's not the main point in this one and he doesn't get he gets important things to do concerning the plot but I feel like he should have got a little bit more in here um, he's a little bit forgettable for being Jack Ryan if I'm being honest um, like I said uh, much of the spotlight and focus is on the crew of the submarine and they're just so fun to watch so yeah this movie's really held up by its mystery on what the intentions are from this captain and the crew how is he going to get away with this and just how well uh, the performances are throughout. So that's why this is a fan favorite, I believe. Reaching my top five, at number five, I got The Thomas Crown Affair. Uh, another remake on this list, which I never knew was a remake. And another movie I actually never heard about. So I went into this looking at the name, looking at the poster, like it's probably not going to be for me. And you know what? I absolutely loved it. It was great. It's about this playboy millionaire who uh, ends up stealing a famous painting just for fun, just for a kind of a thrill. And he's just 
having fun watching the cops trying to solve it and that. Uh, an insurance inspector shows up for the painting and tries to help in the investigation. She finds out right away it's Thomas Crown and she ends up getting into in a relationship with him. Uh, she says it's just to get closer to him to get him caught. But she actually does start falling for him and it starts to get personal. And that's what's so great about this movie. You're like... Uh, is she going to let him go or actually catch him? Because she's starting to form an attachment with him. And it's just so fun to watch her and him. And Pierce Brosnan uh, returns. He was in uh, Nomads, the very first film by John McTiernan. And he gets to return in this one. And he really gets to show what he can do here. He plays it perfectly. This uh, millionaire who, you know, is just having fun doing the, this heist and whatnot just toying with everybody and always seems to be a step ahead of everybody which is really fun to watch and yeah pierce brosnan just knocks it out of the park here and so does his counterpart the female lead in here i don't know which actress it was i'm not too sure but she did great as well there's a fun little like heist moment too at the very start involving the painting and it reminds me of like a mission impossible intro which is really great and yeah just a movie that really surprised me because i went in with really low expectations and i was kind of blown away and there's a twist in the finale that I thought was really, really clever. And I just liked how this film wrapped up. So another one that's definitely worth checking out. At number four, I am going with Die Hard with a Vengeance, a.k.a. Die Hard 3. Uh, John McTiernan gets to return where he started with Die Hard. He didn't return for part two, so he came back for the third entry. And it is friggin' a fun time, man. We get John McClane... Uh, kind of grumpy, hungover, he has a headache, and he keeps getting put to the test in this one. He has to team up with Zeus, played by Samuel L. Jackson. They're both very different types of people, come from different backgrounds. Uh, Zeus doesn't really trust him since uh, he's seen a lot of corrupt white cops and what they did to his community. And over the course of the movie, he kind of gets an arc and starts trusting McLean and they form a friendship. And it's just really fun to see these two go around the town. They have to do all these uh, problem solving riddles and stuff because uh, the bad guy is Simon. And, you know, Simon says so he has to do it. And Simon is a great villain, a brother of Hans Gruber. Right from the start, he proved that he was a menace and, you know, blowing stuff up. So you don't want him to, to do anything crazy, right? So <laughs> you just do what he says. And yeah, just those little riddles, missions and that are just really fun, especially the water jug one. And I'm trying to figure that one out, which is always a head scratcher when I'm watching this film. Um, yeah, just a lot of fun action, a lot of good comedic moments, great characters, great performances all around. Uh, a little bit of a weaker uh, final act, the last like 15 minutes or so, could have been tightened up a bit. But other than that, it's a great flick. Reaching the top three, I'm going with Last Action Hero. This movie is just so badass. I love its meta humor. It's like Scream before Scream, you know. Um, it's about a kid getting sucked into this action movie. He knows it's a movie, but no one else in the film realizes it. And it's just so fun. We got Arnold Schwarzenegger as his lead action hero. And yeah, all the moments where he's trying to explain to him that he's in a movie by trying to get him to swear, but he can't because it's PG-13. To him not realizing that he can never die. He's always getting shot, but always survives. Or that every woman in this world is like a model. <laughs> Just a lot of fun moments like that. The action's really cool. And the second half of the film is really awesome too. When they get put back into the real world. And uh, Arnold doesn't realize that like he can't shoot anymore. And he kind of sucks in the real world. He's not in the movies anymore. And it being very meta, having different actors and Tom, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger himself in the film playing like a double, playing the actual version of himself as well. Very cool stuff. Uh, just a really fun film, a kick-ass soundtrack, hard rock metal soundtrack. We got Megadeth in here, Angry Again was made for this movie. We got ACDC, just a really kick-ass soundtrack, that's for sure. One of my favorites. I really feel that this is one of Arnold's most underrated films, and it definitely should be checked out if you've never seen it. Coming in the second place in this ranking, I gotta go with Die Hard. Now, I understand that most people will have this in first place, and that's perfectly fine. I get it. Uh, this is 
the probably the most influential action film of all time. It really set the template for modern action movies of today. Whether we're talking about like this one location in this uh, building with terrorists and the unlikely hero that comes in and saves the day. It's all here. It really wasn't done a whole lot before this and not to this perfection. Uh, John McTiernan's directing is on point. Uh, the movie is visually stunning. The score is great. The editing, the visual effects, the action, everything is top notch. Bruce Willis is at his best here. Um, the best version of John McClane, in my opinion. And this was like his first breakout role, too. He was like in the soap operas before this, and they really took a chance on him. And I'm so glad they did. Um, it's a great Christmas movie, uh, whether we're talking about the decorations or uh, that guy he hangs in the elevator that says ho, ho, ho on him. It's just so good, all the way to our villain, Hans Gruber. Um, again, very menace menacing. He doesn't mess around. He, like, he proves in this movie that uh, he will kill you on the spot if he has to. And he has, has a great demise in the very end as well. And everything throughout this film is awesome. Even the slower scenes all have moments that mean something later in the film. Uh, from the very start where uh, Bruce Willis... Uh, John McClane, I should say, has anxiety on the plane and the guy tells him to take off his socks or whatever. And you see that later in the film. And there's just so many callbacks, uh, like how it shows, how it portrays the police and how incompetent they are in situations like this. Everything about this film is kind of perfection. So that's why I understand it's in a lot of people's first place. But I just have one movie that hits me even harder. And we'll get to that in a sec. But yeah, Die Hard is freaking amazing. But for me... Coming in the first place, I have to give it to Predator, one of my favorite movies of all time. I just have so much nostalgia for this film, been watching it my whole life basically. I Up till I was like eight, eight years old, I think I started watching this and I watch it several times every year. It's never a dull moment, it's so rewatchable. Uh, the Predator himself is one of the coolest creatures ever designed. He's Him and Alien, I go hand in hand and which one's cooler. They're both so awesome. I love this, the hunter aspect and everything, how he collects trophies, how you have to be a worthy adversary and he won't kill people without a weapon or whatever. It's very cool mythology and everything surrounding the Predator It's himself and just how big and cool he looks with his teeth and that or whatever those are. Um, and his counterparts, the the main leads in here, are all friggin' bodybuilders to the max. We got Arnold Schwarzenegger, Jesse Ventura, uh, Carl Weathers, who just recently passed away, rest in peace. But yeah, we get such a fun cast, Shane Black, you know. Uh, and they all have their moments, they all have their cool character traits. And when they have to face off against this danger... They actually look danger in the eye for the first time and are, are full of fear because they're supposed to be the best of the best. And now they have to face this alien who is, you know, even better than them. So they have to resort to their wits at the end, like Arnold setting up the traps and that instead of using their muscle like usual. And yeah, it's just a really cool movie that starts off like an action flick and slowly turns into kind of like a slasher movie. I just love how it switches genres over there. And it's always sci-fi, of course, with this alien uh, it's just so fun. The score matches the jungle vibe so much. I love the score. I think it was Bill Conti that did it. It's a great job. There's no flaw in this movie. Yes, it may be kind of 80s cheese and full of adrenaline, but that just is awesome. I love that about this movie. It's so fun and very original, very inventive, easily the best in its franchise, and my favorite John McTiernan film. So, Body Mass alone, this easily comes in the first place in my ranking. So there you have it guys, there's my ranking of all 11 movies directed by John McTiernan. I hope you enjoyed it. Like I said earlier, let me know how you rank these films down in the comment section, or at least the ones you've seen, your favorites, your least favorites. I'd love to hear it and have a great discussion with you in the comment section. You can follow me on Instagram and Letterboxd. Links to those are in the description of this video. Even though I don't go on Instagram a whole lot, you can use it for messaging or whatnot. Um, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you enjoy rankings like this. And until next time, guys, thanks for watching.